Hello again everyone, it's me Matt, thanks so much for joining me today, really appreciate it. Today we're talking about basic military qualification and how is it you can prepare for this course. Now if you're not aware of what BMQ is, it is the almost boot camp or the simple basic training course that you're going to go through as the first step in your training journey to become a certified member of the armed forces here in Canada. Now um, I never actually went through BMQ because I was fortunately granted a waiver when I joined um, Obviously, coming from the British Army, I did my own basic training, and the you know major at the time at the recruiting office basically said, you know what, uh, yeah, I think you've done your time. I actually did a year of basic training in Army Foundation College, Harrogate, uh, which is in the United Kingdom, with the British Army, and I thoroughly enjoyed my basic training. I actually joined at 16 years old, so I know a lot of you that actually ask for advice about BMQ are fairly young in your in your age group of wanting to join the Canadian Armed Forces. But also there's a lot of you out there that are kind of around my age or even older that kind of want to learn and understand what BMQ is. So although I've not been on BMQ, I do have um, a lot of experience training courses, teaching, mentoring troops, uh, and I have taught BMQ before. So uh, I'm also going to be training very shortly coming up here this year. So I'm kind of excited for that because I love to mentor and teach. And that's why I'm doing this video because I think I have enough experience to be able to pass on some really prevalent points that are going to make your life a lot easier before day one starts. Now, a little uh, caveat here as well, a bit of a disclaimer. This is not, um, you know, a reference video from the Canadian Forces or from the Army. This is purely just advice that I'm giving from experience that I've had. So please don't use this as reference. You know, uh, this isn't a requirement for you prior to joining the BMQ. It's not something you're asked to do. Um, but I do think that some points here that, as I said, are going to make your life a lot easier. So let's just get straight into this. So... Most of the questions that people ask me is, Matt, what is it that I can do to make things better for me or to prepare for BMQ? And I've got 10 things that I think are going to make a massive help for you as we go through this kind of training journey. BMQ is broken up into the basic, you know, as it says, basic uh, skills and attributes required to be a serving member of the Canadian Forces, including things like weapons drills. Uh, weapons handling, foot drill, uh, CBRN, or chemical, biolo biological, radiological, and nuclear um, training, uh, learning of the CAF structure, you know, ranks, things like that, um, and the list goes on. But the 10 points I'm going to give you today pertain to uh, a whole plethora of different topics and things that you're going to get taught. And the first one that is the most important, and the one that I tell people the most to focus on, is fitness. I don't care what trade you're going in, what branch of the armed forces you're going in. If you want to start your Canadian Armed Forces journey off properly, which you should start with a good first impression, your fitness needs to be extremely high. And what does extremely high mean? Well, there's a lot of different, you know, uh, social media influences, YouTube training videos that can tell you to be this beast, you know, get all jacked up and can run 70 miles in two minutes kind of thing. Like, there's, there's a high level of readiness in fitness is very different to what a lot of the, you know, social media of today is telling us what to do. Uh, I, I actually find that social media is very toxic in the fitness world. What I would say is there is a lot of good resources that prepare you uh, to get into uh, armed services um, training packages like this that are available free of charge online. Don't be paying some trainer, personal trainer to go through. I mean, if you want to, you can, but there are resources available. For instance... Um, the Canadian Armed Forces does have a service called the PSP, uh, which is basically a training group that support the Canadian Armed Forces in getting fit. Um, personally, I actually like to benchmark from the British Army uh, fitness training schedule because I think it's a lot more robust. robust. Um, just start Googling, you know, training packages and training routines to become, um, you know, a soldier or whatever service branch you're wanting to join. But you need to focus on these following things. Push-ups, okay, or press-ups. Okay, you need to be able to do them. And, and I'm not going to give you numbers here and, and tally up uh, metrics or data that you need to achieve because it's it's just not something that I can broadly push out to everyone out there. But what I will say is in the British Army, okay, um, we were asked to do two minutes of push-ups and two minutes of sit-ups back to back and then a mile and a half run. That was our basic personal fitness test. For the Canadian Armed Forces, you're to conduct a force test. So first thing you need to do and basically click on after this video is go check out the Canadian Armed Forces force test. The force test, in my own personal opinion, is fairly simplistic in its way of conducting it. You know, it's not very complicated. Um, it can be as hard or as easy as you want it to be. And as I mentioned at the beginning of this video, you need to put 110% effort in. That does not mean a P is a P. And that's what we say a lot in the reserve world or the army world is a pass is a pass. Granted it is. But there's nothing worse than kicking off 
the start of your military career and just saying, well, I'm just going to get a pass and then I'm good. That's not how you should be looking at your military service. It's not how I condone or encourage troops that I train. We do PT as much as we can with the time that we have. Get your fitness up. So start doing push-ups. When you get up in the morning, you're going up to bed at night, in the middle of the day, start getting sit-ups, pull-ups. Okay, get a pull-up bar, chin-ups, start doing chin-ups. You should be able to run five kilometers without being exhausted at the end of it at a, at a very good pace. Okay, so if you cannot do push-ups, sit-ups, pull-ups, and running at least five kilometers without being exhausted, you have to work on your fitness. Start doing beep tests, okay? Beep tests are a really good way of assessing cardiovascular fitness. If you need advice, there are lots of people out there, but this is the core to your training because when you go through basic military qualification, you're going to get situations where you're going to get pushed into environments you've never been in before. Using a rucksack, wearing a tack vest, running around, uh, wearing boots, you know, wearing uniform when doing exercise. Some people are used to wearing, you know, shorts, t-shirt, and, and runners, things are changing now. You're having to carry weight. You're having to walk long distances. Um, if you can, depending on the environment you're going into, uh, train in the acclimate weather you may be with. So if it's a uh, winter BMQ, you know, get warmed up, get some nice, you know, uh, comfy clothes on and put, uh, put your tack vest on your rock and go for a couple of kilometers rock. Get used to the environment you're going to be training in. Same for the summer, right? Acclimatize yourself, hydrate lots. Very important. So fitness is key. One thing I would certainly encourage you to do, check out that PSP website, which is the Canadian Armed Forces version of kind of fitness training. They have some online packages there. Research the force test video, which I'll put in the description box below and start getting fit. It is so important. The next thing, uh, number two in our list today is learn the rank structure. There is a website that you can use that is available to any member of the public learning about different, you know, Canadian Armed Forces uh, doctrine and uh, not quite tactics, but certainly uh, rules, procedures, policies. And the rank structure is a lesson that anyone can learn. You can Google it. Start learning it. You're going to get assessed on these things, understanding what's the difference between a corporal, a sergeant, a captain, a lieutenant, a major. If you don't know these things going into it, you're going to make yourself a little bit more difficult when you go into the course and they tell you by, you know, day three, you will have a test teaching or, you know, testing you on whether or not you know the rank structure. And if you already know it off by heart, you're one step ahead. You can do other things like, you know, getting your gear ready for inspection the next morning instead of staying up until, you know, 11 o'clock, 12 at night, maybe to uh, study the rank structure of Canadian Armed Forces. Start learning it now. Get ahead of the game. Have it ready so that when you go into the training, you already got that ticked off really in your box. You don't have to worry about trying to do it on the evenings, which some people I have seen do. Number three, start rucking. Okay, what is rucking? Well, I've made many videos on this before. Um, depending on whether or not your kit has been issued to you or not, it really doesn't matter. You can get a backpack, you can get a simple day sack, whatever you want to wear um, that has a little bit of weight in it. Now, rucking is one of those things that can really hurt you if it's not done properly. Once again, there is lots of resources out there. Uh, start looking it up. There's also bad advice out there too. So um, it's really subjective. What I would strongly encourage you to do is speak to your chain of command. If you're a reservist, talk to the soldiers around you to give that advice. Tell those around you that you may be working with, some of your, you know, seniors or those who are, you know, preparing you for the course. Hey, I'd like to start rucking. Uh, I'd like to start learning how to sort of walk and, and run in my boots where I can get used to carrying weights because you're going to be doing this throughout your training, not just at BMQ, but, you know, as further courses develop like DP1, depending on whether or not you're a combat arms or not, you're all going to be able to have to ruck at some point. Um, particularly in the army side of things. If you cannot carry um, equipment in the battlefield, regardless of what trade you are, I have to say this, you're kind of useless. Um, soldiers have to be able to carry their equipment and learning right away before BMQ of structuring how to walk with that weight with your body is really important. So start rucking, ask for help around you and they can go take you on rucks if necessary. Talk to your, your corporals, your master corporals, your sergeants, and say, hey, I'd really start, like to start rucking. Do it, you know, when you can. Do not overdo it. Protect your feet. Wear the right boots, the right socks. Um, and again, ask for advice around those things. Number four, familiarization to the C7A2 rifle and its drills. Now, once again, believe it or not, you can start learning about the weapon system you're going to be doing a lot of work on on BMQ online. There is, um, you know, I guess videos that kind of explain how the C7 platform works because it is basically an AR-15 variant um, and the details of how 
uh, the rifle goes together. Um, I myself actually have a civilian variant, uh, SA-20, which is basically the civilian C7A2, no longer able to use it, unfortunately. But you can actually see um, how the C7 is operating the drills you're going to learn on YouTube. There's a video that's out there. Again, I'll put the link in the description box below so you can start reviewing that. Now, what I want to be very cautious of, of this point, which is point number four of these 10, this is not a reference training guide. What I mean by that is this is purely familiarization as in awareness. It's not there to be used for training. Your actual training will occur when you're on BMQ. Do not go into training expecting that all the YouTube videos that you've watched and been you know, researching are the benchmark. Things change. Your course staff will go through the permanent drills that you will learn on course, but it's really nice to have that familiarization ahead of time to understand what you're going into and see what the weapon looks like, how the drills perform, how you stand, how you hold the weapon, the you know, working space, all that sort of stuff. Those videos are really useful. So get familiarized with the C7 rifle because you're going to be doing a lot of drills with that to a point where it becomes almost autonomous, right? So it's almost like a part of your body at that point. And that's really important because this is something I take very seriously when I teach BMQ is if you cannot handle a weapon system safely and efficiently, then we're going to have to do remedials. We're going to have to get you back up to the you know that standard um, because it is part of being in the armed forces to be able to defend yourself, protect yourself and others with the weapon system that you're going to be issued. Moving on at 2.5, we're halfway there. Start stud studying foot drill. Foot drill is also available on a public forum on the Canadian Armed Forces website. You can actually look through how foot drill is conducted. You can see how to turn left and right, how to come to attention. Once again, this is purely familiarization. Please do not use this at home trying to teach yourself um, indiscriminately because it's not going to go well. You might actually teach yourself the wrong things, but start looking at those um, instructions and just kind of giving yourself a bit of an awareness to see, oh, okay, so that's what coming to attention means and why we do it. This is how a left turn's conducted. Don't worry too much about actually conducting the drills at home if you want to and you have the ability to uh, work with your staff or those who know foot drill very well, then benchmark from them and study from them. Because again, foot drill is a huge part of BMQ. We all must be able to drill. Uh, it's part of our discipline and part of our ethos is being able to work as an organization and a structured body of people. So study your foot drill if you can. Talk to those around you and start practicing. Um, number six, really important. Ask questions of your chain of command or those who have done BMQ already and get some support. Like you're watching this video, you're already that first step ahead. You're starting to research. This is really good that you're at this video, not because I'm not trying to toot my own horn and saying, yeah, I'm getting views on YouTube. I couldn't care less. I do this video to help you, not to help me. Um, talk to people, get support, ask me, Instagram, Facebook, Messenger, reach out to me. I will be able to give you support and guidance. I am not in your chain of command. Although I'm a sergeant, I'm not the mean, nasty sergeant who's going to say that's a stupid question. Any question, I will give you an answer to. I may not be able to always find the answer for you, but I will point you in the right direction. Talk to your chain of command. Talk to those that are in your reserve units. Talk to your friends, family who may have potentially served before. It's time to start asking those questions now, like you have in yourself to this video and saying, hey, how do I prepare for BMQ? Talk to people. There's lots of tips and tricks that I cannot fit into this video in the time span that I've set myself to give you all those hints, okay? Things like inspections, like room inspections. I've done a video on this before and I'll put that in the description box as well. Um, you're, you're just not gonna sometimes pass a room inspection. It's just the way it's gonna be. You cannot perfect room inspections. We as instructors are looking for everything and anything to correct things that you're going to get wrong. And that's okay. Don't take things personally, but start asking those questions. Reach out for support like you are in this video. Number seven, learn to iron and learn how to do basic sewing. And I know this sounds kind of crazy, but the number of troops that do not know how to iron a shirt, iron a tunic, um, sew up a, a rip in a pair of pants, because it's inevitable, it's going to happen, uh, is, is quite baffling to me. Not expecting you to learn how to sew with a sewing machine, but if you don't know how to thread a needle and to you know stitch up a quarter inch to an inch, maybe two inches uh, tear in some of your clothing, that's a problem because we only have a select amount of equipment and gear Learning to sew is going to really help you when it's, you know, in the middle of the field and you're on a training session, you need to just quickly sew up a bit of kit. It happens. Rips and tears happen. You're not always going to get, especially in the reserve world, instantaneous exchanges of equipment. So 
learn how to sew. It's a good life experience to have too, and maybe your kids in the future need some, like a stuff his head sewed back on because I've done that before um, and ironing is also really important because you're going to be able to um, iron your DUs eventually too which is like your shirt press shirt things like that yes you can use the dry cleaners but I personally think if you're in the military and you don't know how to iron that's a problem right you're going to a job interview when you leave the armed forces or you're maybe already working a reservist and going to an actual job showing up scruffy with a shirt or you know you've got to learn to iron okay it's a skill i think all military members need to know because you can pass that on and i think the generation of ironing is slowly coming to an end you know we've got technology and steam dryers and all this stuff but you eventually are going to be on a course or in a hotel on a course one time or in a military camp somewhere and someone's gonna be like hey uh, i need your you know, my shirts ironed because i don't know how to do it or they're going to iron it. It's going to look horrible. Learn to iron. Speak to your friends or your family. Look online. Learn how to iron a dress shirt. Learn how to iron your tunic. Okay, maybe I'll do a video in the future. But ask your chain of command. Just because you don't technically have to iron your tunic, you're not actually supposed to because it has an IR um, presence on there. There are other things you can iron, right? Your t-shirts, the things that you need to put into like, you know, your room inspection, things like that. You're not going to put a crumpled up t-shirt in a nice little you know, block square in one of your shelves in a room inspection. They're going to want you to iron that. Learn how to iron. Number eight, learn about the branch you're joining and the trades that are available that you're going to go into. You are joining an organization that's um, embedded in history and heritage and traditions, and you need to learn about these things well ahead of before you even go to DP1 because you may be asked about these things, you know. I tend to ask the troops that are on my BMQ, hey, what branch are you wanting to join? What service or regiment are you wanting to go? Oh, I want to go infantry. Okay, well... What infantry regiment do you want to go to? Uh, I don't know, the Cal Highs or Calgary Highlanders. Okay, what's the Calgary Highlanders uh, motto or regimental motto? Oh, I don't know. Well, you should know. <laughs> you are aspiring to join a very unique family. And it's like saying, hey, uh, you know, you're about to go to, to Harvard uh, University. What's, uh, you know, where are they located? I don't know. Well, it's pretty obvious. But you should learn about the organization you want to join because I'll guarantee you your core staff are going to throw questions at you and challenge you on these things. And it's good for you. It's good to keep your brain energized. But it's also good for you because we as an organization, particularly in the Canadian Forces, take our heritage and our history of Canada very seriously. And you should take that seriously too. You are joining something that takes huge pride in what we do, regardless of what anyone else says. You should learn about the branch or the regiments that you're joining. Everything and ev anything and everything. You know, mottos, regimental marches, dress and deportment. Uh, locations of units, op operations that they're going on. Start getting into the books and understanding what your regiment does. Number nine, don't stress. I know this is almost ridiculous for me to say this because when people say don't stress, you just stress more. But I really do think it's something that we need to work better at um, when we're telling troops to come on BMQ. The chain of command is is very busy, right? We're extremely busy in the you know the context of what we've got going on, operations, exercise, etc. And it can be really tough to just take a troop to the side sometimes and say, hey, how are you feeling? Like BMQ's coming up, you're doing okay? Do you feel like you're ready? I try my best to do that, of course I'm very busy too. But don't take stress with you, okay? This course is not there. It's not designed to make you fail. We want you to succeed. We want you to do the best. There's going to be times where it's going to suck. You may get a little bit of shouting at. You might get a little bit of a firm discipline, you know, whether it be fitness, uh, uh, running, or whatever else it may be. That's part of training. It structures you better. As I said, I did basic training for a whole year at 16 years old, uh, and it molded me into the person I am today. I'm so glad my basic training was was pretty challenging. Okay, at 16, some of the things I was doing was, you, you would never see that, um, you know, in, in, a, in a later portion of your life, um, doing the similar kind of thing at that sort of age group and getting that much out of it. You know, at 16, you're so moldable as a human. And I think I took a lot out of it and it was stressful, but that stress has helped provide huge amounts of experience with dealing with problems in later on in life. So when you're going into this, don't panic, don't worry. It, naturally, you're going to be a little bit stressed because you're going into the unknown. But trust me, there's been enough people that have gone through this and passed it and has said, yeah, it sucks, but you're going to come out the other end with learning a lot of new things. And not everyone completes BMQ in a positive setting, okay? Not everyone thinks that BMQ is great um, or that even come out the other end and say, yeah, I got a lot out of it. They're just glad it's done. It happens. But what I'm telling you is don't panic. Don't stress up until going to day one. 
It's really hard to tell this, but you need to be excited for it. This is a huge building block of what could be the rest of your military career. And even if you don't stay in for very long, you just sort of use it as a life learning experience, so be it. You might just say, this isn't for me. And that happens too. But don't stress about that. You know, that's just part of the journey. It's part of what happens, okay? Use those people around you, those course candidates that are on the same course because they're going through the same thing as you, to make light of things, have fun, right? Try and keep some humor into it, okay? It's not always serious. Behind closed doors, when the lights are off and you, you know, you're chilling out with the troops at night and just kind of getting ready for the next day, have some fun, right? Relax. Uh, the course staff should be able to provide you with that time to kind of work as a team, work together, and, and kind of de-stress. Because the days will be very stressful. You're going to have assessments, you're going to have tests, you're going to have fitness challenges, you're going to get timings that are very difficult to meet. That's just part of the process. It's not there to make you fail. It's there to build you up, to make you ready for what the military expects of you and what the country that you're serving expects of you, okay? If BMQ was easy, I'd be pretty nervous about having a military force protecting my country that has a training package that is simple. I personally do find that BMQ is a fairly basic, simple course. It's not super strenuous, but it's going to put some challenges on those who aren't exposed to things like this before. Myself, I even was in the British Army cadets before I went to basic training, so I had a lot of exposure for three or four years before even going into it. Um, that's also something you can consider doing if you're you know, a young troop uh, watching this maybe as a cadet or something like that. You've got lots of opportunities to learn in the cadet force as well. So, But don't stress, guys. It's, it's going to go well for you, I promise. People are going to be there to support you. Your staff are there to support you. But the most important supporting uh, asset available to you when you're on course is your course mates, your course candidates. Work together, not against one another. And the last thing, number 10 thing I would advise or, you know, encourage you to do for BMQ or basic military qualification or any basic training for that matter is docu document it and enjoy it. Take pictures, network, talk to people, make friends, right? You're never going to get this again. Once you do BMQ, it's done. It's finished, right? Your teach course is maybe in the future, but it's finished. The one thing I regret going through basic training in the British Army for that whole year was not documenting it more, you know, taking notes. Uh, journaling. I, I know a lot of people now journal, and which gives them sort of that reference in 40, 50 years time. They're talking to their kids. And maybe they want to go uh, or grandkids want to go into the military and be like, here, take a look at my journals. This is what I went through. These are the things I learned. Generational based experience training is very, very important. Um, take pictures. You know, you got buddies with you on course. I know sometimes it can be difficult because you're not allowed your phones until after certain periods at night, or sometimes you're never allowed your phones. It depends on the course that you're on. Um, but ask your course staff if you can say, hey, we just completed uh, our assessments today. Do you mind if we get a course photo or can I get a photo of myself operating this system uh, or, or weapon system? To, you know, there's opportunities there and it's really important we document these things. There is important policies in place that you cannot share certain information or certain pictures. So you need to talk to your chain of command before you start posting it on Facebook or social media. But please try your best to document and enjoy your training with the evidence of what you've done, right? You're going to do a lot of hard work for the time that you're going through BMQ. Um, document it. It's it's memories. It's things that I encourage troops to do because once it's done, it's done. You're never going to get that back and that opportunity. So there are the 10 things that I think that are going to really help you through your course. First and foremost, quick review, fitness. Let's get ready for that force test. Let's get ready for that strenuous activity that's not only going to be in your BMQ, but other courses following. Learn that rank structure, very easy, you know, especially focusing on your particular branch, army or navy or air force, whatever. Start rocking, talk to those around you, do not overdo it, do not injure yourself prior to going on course. Um, I would encourage you, in fact, before course to not rock up to three to four weeks prior to your course because you do not want to injure yourself. Focus on other more lightly focused training. A lot of people disagree with me there, but the last thing you want to do is like sprain an ankle or bust your back because um, you did something wrong or slipped on the ice or whatever else uh, just before course because then you're going to lose that window before you go on course give yourself some rest time two or three weeks to again de-stress not you know overdo it and then get into the training right away number four familiarization of that c7 rifle and some of the drills that you're going to be involved with not for reference they are not training videos they're just for awareness description box below they'll be right there start studying for foot drill the link for the website of where these uh you know foot drill um not classes, but foot, foot drill references are there for. Uh, you can kind of quickly study them and look over them, but again, not reference training, okay? It's going to get taught to you specifically when you go on course, but start getting a little bit into the books. 
um, ask questions of your CNC uh, and your supporting structure around you. So your chain of command is there to help you. So um, really important. Number seven, learn to iron, basic sewing. Number eight, learn about the branch you're joining, the trades available, get into the ethos of what you want to be a part of. Number nine, do not stress. And number 10, document and enjoy your training. If you have any further questions, you want to learn more about what's going to happen through various stages of your BMQ transitioning to military life, let me know. I'll be trying my best to answer the questions for you. If I don't, please don't take it personally. I'm very, very busy. Um, I don't have the ability to reply to every comment and every instant message. Um, I, I do apologize for that, but I will try my best. Thank you so much for joining me. Please share this with others if you find that you, people that you know need some advice. But these are the top 10 things I really do think will help you get through your training. I hope you do well in your training if you are going on course. And uh, take care, and I'll see you on the next video. All the best. Bye-bye.